Hi everyone and welcome to this section where we'll be talking about the two-point constraints which is again going to be over here in that little folder, um, that little subfolder inside the node library. You can click on the two-point constraint. Again, if we want to see what it does, let's just look at the little description that we find right here. So two-point constraints, you'll notice that we also have underneath the three-point constraints and the multi-point constraints. Uh, they all pretty much share the same principle. Um, we'll look at that in just a second. So what does it do? Use a pivot point of two pegs as anchors to squash and stretch an object. So let's go and use that into an actual example, shall we? Um, we have our character right here. Let's just leave that aside and focus on something even more simple for now. If we want to put it into practice, I'll just create a new drawing. You can either click on the button right here, or press Control or Command R to create a new drawing. I'll add and close. Add that drawing right here and I will just turn off the character for a few moments. Let's create a little rectangle and use a bit of color in there. Let's use our character right here, our character's palette. And I am going to bring from the node library my two point constraint. All right, so what have we got in this node? We have a three port node at the top and a single one at the bottom, which we will connect to our drawing. And I have over here, let's just go over and click on that, right peg, left peg, and switch. So the switch we won't be really uh, using for now, we'll just focus on the left and right peg. So as it says it, pretty much, we have to create pegs in order to connect those right here. So I'll create a first one. You want you can rename it to something else and I'll just create this one right here so now I have two pegs one over here and another one on the left I'm going to zoom out a little bit and go ahead and select our rotate tool which we'll use to position our pivot point so these pegs the only information that is going to be uh, taken into account for the two-point constraint is going to be the pivot information. So that's the first thing you need to set up once you, uh, you create your two-point constraints. So I'll click on the first one, set it over here, click over on the right one, set it over here. And now what's gonna happen? How are we gonna use that two-point constraint? Which peg is it going to use? So inside the two-point constraint, we have a bunch of things right here. We'll check those out mostly into uh, the next exercise that we do, but you can see that these can be animated through time. So what does this do exactly? Uh, we'll check out the layer properties at a later time right now. Let's just try to figure this one out um, by itself. So if I, zoom back closer into my object and if I click on my object right here it seems like it's selecting the one from the pivot point over on the left side but if I deselect it and click over here you can see it's selecting the one over on the right side so depending on where you click on your drawing it is going to select the one that's closest to that so that's how it's going to pick which one of these two pegs it's going to choose so I can select them manually, of course, through here. And now if I try to animate them, I'm going to move that right here. And you can see that it kind of stretches and squashes. This you can actually have some control over in the properties of the two-point constraint. But right now I just want to show you um, basically what it does. If I click over here on the left side, I can do the same thing and do a mix of a bit of both. So see your anchor points are not uh, necessarily something that's uh, a fixed static uh, notion. So you can have this part right here remaining static, or you could have this other part right here by just 
deselecting, reselecting, and so on. And we can even animate this way uh, once we get to the animation process. So um, this is going to, uh, to work in a bit of a different way than what we're used to when you're using uh, the point constraint, you can see that we can't really do a rotation. This is mostly going to work in uh, a manner where you use uh, transformation um, and it is going to apply by creating, um, creating the values for you as you move from that middle point right there. So let's apply it to a more concrete, um, concrete thing into our character. So I'll just get rid of these for now and reactivate my character. We're going to add a two point constraint inside the hair. So the back hair right here, um, as you can see right now, it doesn't have uh, its own peg, but we'll be able to move that all by itself using the two point constraint. So let's go over into the hair, press O to center on my selection. And I'm gonna go into my constraints again and I'll select a two-point constraint. Now the two and multi-point is going to be pretty much the same thing, but using more pegs. This is a fairly simple shape, so I'll use just a two-point constraint. I'll slide that in, connect it above by sliding it in using Alt. And now I have only one of these connections right here that's connected. So I'm gonna create my two pegs I'm going to create one that's going to go over here. I'm going to connect the other one over here and just bring it into the hair full peg. So if I want, I can rename this. This could be the bottom of the hair. And this could be the top one. So let's just write top peg right here. So I have both of these selected. Both of these have uh, no pivot point information just yet. So we can again go into our rotate tool, top, I'll just set it maybe over here. Bottom, I'll go and set it about here. And now if I go back into my transform tool, I can select one or the other and just have a slight bounce to it without necessarily disconnecting the other one right here. I get a nice little uh, stretch and squash over there. Now, going into the constraints of uh, the, the layer properties of my constraint uh, node right here, let's just open them up over here. I have active volume modifier, volume minimum, distance, and so on. So these are all going to be how these two pegs affect my transformation right here. So for instance, right now if I select the bottom peg and I stretch that, you see that it pretty much stretches quite a bit. So if I click on that right here, the volume maximum is actually 200% of what my, uh, my shape here. So it is going to become much wider when I squash it down right here. So 200% and then it stops. It no longer becomes larger as I flatten it. So if you want, you can put some limits on there to, um, to make sure that it doesn't get any flatter than that. If I wanna keep it and have no volume modification, I can set it to 100%. And then I no longer get any, any wider, uh, any scale when I squash it down. So it could be an idea to keep it maybe at 110 and you can already see how it becomes a little bit larger. So I get a nice little flowy bounce like this. Now I have some other ones as well. Uh, oops, I'll just put this back at 110. Volume minimum as I stretch it, it becomes really tiny. So I'm never gonna stretch it that much. So I can limit it to, let's see, maybe 85. Oops, other way around, 85 right here. So as I stretch it now, it no longer, it no longer loses a lot of volume. 
So I can do that. Uh, distance max, distance minimum is going to be how much I can stretch it. Right now I can stretch it quite a bit and bring it over to um, some, some pretty wonky distances. So uh, I could set that to, let's see, let's try 90, 90%. Um, that's gonna, that's, that's quite limiting. We could actually try maybe 120 and see already. Now it no longer goes past a certain stage. I'm not personally too fond of limiting uh, the, uh, the, the input of that value that we have right here, because if we need to stretch it a lot, um, then we won't be able to. But at the same time, again, these are values that can be animated through time. So um, we can always go and change those at a specific frame and not worry about it too much. And that way we're certain that um, animators won't necessarily break uh, break the the model and you know stay uh, according to what the model should be. Distance minimum is going to be the same thing as I squash it. Maybe I don't want to uh, to have something quite so extreme. So we can do maybe eighty, which gives me a, a fairly good range of bounce. Unless she's really uh, running for it, uh, then uh, we're probably going to be okay with just that. Um, so let's just reset our peg here. Skew modifier, how much skew there's going to be. Uh, smoothing, point balance is going to be the, um, the, the balance between both pegs right here. So I think we're pretty much going to be okay with the rest of those values right here. You can always look into the documentation to see um, what these do exactly. So we're just keeping it simple for this one right now. And we have ourselves a nice little flowing bounce to the hair with a little bit of uh, a little bit of limit in terms of uh, how much, how far it can go. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. We're looking into uh, constraints a little bit more into the next tutorial. See you there.